Yeah, buddy. Welcome back to another one. This is my fourth Aphex Twin video. Damn, I've done three albums. If you haven't seen my Richard D. James one or my Selected Ambient Works Volume 1 or my Drugs one, feel free to check those out. Today we're listening to Selected Ambient Works Volume 2. This is the longest album I've, I've probably listened to on this channel yet. So we're in for the long haul here. And yes, I'm going to sit through this whole thing right now. And listen to it because i i have to i was recommended it so i've been looking forward to this one for a while uh but yeah we're gonna hop right in i don't want to waste any more time this video is already probably gonna be long but yeah thank you for all the support like and subscribe if you want shoot me more recommendations and yes thank you all right we're here now if y'all know me y'all know that sometimes i gotta bust out this notebook and just just to jot some thoughts down as i'm listening to it kind of gather and organize what i think and i feel like for an album this long we have to do that for this one but let's hop right in. Track number one is number one. Start off with a little like female vocal. <clears throat> I like that reoccurring vocal. Kind of adds a human aspect to it. What is that? Like little keys of some sort. It's nice that I feel like the, the shape of this song continues to like evolve and change into something simplistic and something kind of complex as well. I feel like these keys like mimic a, a, a guitar a little bit. I don't know. I think I'm wrong. What to say about that one? Well, how does that make me feel? Um, I feel like I'm just kind of strapping myself in for a long journey here <laughs> because I'm so I'm so used to like little short ambient songs is that like when it comes to something like this my brain is like waiting for something to happen and you know things are happening I feel like the sound of the sound of the track is kind of evolving into different things you know it sounds compressed at some points and at some points it becomes more clear I kind of regret not taking this one outside but I know for sure with an album this long, my MacBook would have died. But I really did enjoy the song a lot. It made me ponder. It kind of sparked a little curious, curiosity emotion in me. But I'm sure we'll get a lot of these throughout this album. So it's just the beginning. Great song. I think what I'm going to do to try to remember things is that I'm just going to some like, I'm just going to drop a like on that one. Boom. All right, track two. Let's go. Okay. It sounds like a little bit more disoriented. Yeah, what level of the back rooms am I on right now? Oh. Those little keys are sparking a kind of fear in me. Am I hearing a little kick drum? All right, let's relax. Sounds like an evil ice cream truck. So I had to take off the headphone at the end there because like, I don't know why, my ear just started hurting. And I know that this is clipping heavily, 
but I my volume is only like halfway through. I don't know. I'm not understand. I'm not understanding what's happening here. I don't know if my ears are finally giving out. But uh, I'm gonna try to lower the volume again and see what happens. But I don't want to miss any details. But speaking of how the song made me feel, it was definitely fear and uncertainty. You know, I'm on a back like I'm on a backrooms level right now. I'm on a backrooms level. Uh, just a random one, and I see one of those entities, but this one's kind of neutral about me, and we kind of, you know, he befriends me, I don't befriend him, because I, I, I kind of have to be his friend, but I'm uncertain about his uh, intentions. You know, he's treating me nice now, but I don't know how it's going to go in, in the end, and it's just kind of, I'm just waiting it now, and it feels like eternity. That's how the track made me feel. Uh, I wouldn't listen to that again if I had to. Uh, just due to its emotions that I don't want to relive. Okay, track number three is three. Okay, this one makes me feel better. I most certainly can understand why that one has over 50 million plays because it kind of allowed me there to just like stop thinking like it, it allowed me to kind of be very kind of isolated feeling that it gave me but it also made me feel kind of wise you know kind of just to look back on things but also to kind of look forward with a feeling of comfort because I think that that's what that song provided me I didn't get any uncomfortability out of any of that and i could definitely see myself returning to that song just to kind of melt away a little bit and it's not me analyzing the song it's me just analyzing how i feel about the song because i feel like a song like this you know it's not worth analyzing or looking into too much but it's worth just allowing the feeling to be there and that's it Alrighty, track number four yeah lyrics all right that's Okay, I don't... Yeah, this is kind of scary. Yeah, Mojang needs to hire Richard, bro. Imagine you're mining, trying to find diamonds looking for this shit. Cave is, ver Cave is a good word for this one. scary is that I haven't heard uh, these lyrics. Oh, you know what? I just realized that these are the words. See y'all, I don't forget my music. These are the words that are on his song four, not this one, the other one on Richard D. James. I'm, 
I'm a genius. And Spotify fucked it up and put these ones on this one as well. So these words are not on this song. But speaking about how it made me feel, it was definitely terrifying. It was horrifying the whole way through. And if I had to compare it to any setting, uh, if you ever seen the movie Silence of the Lambs, uh, that girl got kidnapped by that guy and he's and he puts her in that little pit. And it made me feel like that. It made me feel like I was trapped inside of a cave. So yeah, that feeling coming right after three, uh, not the best. You know, I thought I was going to get something. I don't know. I don't know what I was expecting to feel after that song, but I certainly did not want to feel that. But let's just hope later on we can fix that. Okay, track number five is five. Lyrics again? All right, we're going <laughs> to... All right, there's a... Okay. This generates thoughts that aren't worth exploring. This is long as fuck. We are five tracks in and I'm not quite comfortable with the fact that this shit is already threatening me. So it's clear that going back to my scenario with the backrooms entity, I feel like that me and him aren't really getting along anymore. You know, there's kind of some tension in between us. You know, it's tea time. And immediately when the track started, I felt this feeling kind of slip away. But when I when it's first started, I felt like something was immediately coming for me. Like I had a sense of dread so that, that something was kind of chasing after me. You get that feeling in a dream, you know, kind of running from something. That's how it made me feel pretty accurately, too. I think that Richard is doing a, a great job of uh, putting some emotions in me. But yeah, that definitely felt like nine minutes. Okay, track number six, not a really long one. Kind of the first of the first of the bunch. <laughs> I feel like it's spitting at me. <laughs> I just thought it was like funny. Hold on. Y'all might think I'm weird. Y'all might think I'm weird. I'm dropping a like on that. Boom. Boom. You see, listen, listen, listen. I was expecting for that to uh, bring a fear out of me. You know, the first time I heard it, I'm like, okay, we're, we're going to go through this again. I'm going to feel afraid again. But it, it wasn't. It wasn't. And the thing I can actually compare it to is that you ever see those pictures of uh, those biblically accurate angels? Uh, I remember seeing them on TikTok and there was like, there was a sound that went with a lot of them. And, you know, this song kind of reminds me of that. So I think of uh, this, you know, it sounded like something, uh, like a, some kind of thing was making that noise. Not really an instrument, not really a synth, something alive. That song felt alive to me, which is why it didn't bring a fear out of me because it felt like I wasn't alone there. It felt like something was in that track with me, but I liked it because I think it's worth listening to again. I think it's worth examining more. Okay, track number seven is seven. Right off the bat, this is some fever dream shit, like where the wild things are. It's a very kind of unique arpeggio, I like it.
I'm kind of observing these plays here because this one does have double the amount of the normal ones, I would say, the past three ones. It's kind of like a purgatory state of mind. You know, not really comforting, but it's not, it's not you know, making me uncomfortable as well. It's just kind of a static feeling. That's why it didn't really go anywhere throughout these eight minutes. And I know it's an ambient song, and ambient songs don't really go anywhere, but it really stayed the same the whole way through. Even on three and one, and all the other songs on here so far, I've kind of switched sounds at some point, and I don't recollect this song doing that. I'm making a story out of this. It's like the bib, it's like the bibic, I can't biblical angels that I mentioned on the last track told my ass that I'm going to purgatory. So the next track, they sent me here, and now, and it, it felt like purgatory. It felt like I was here forever. I mean, that song was nine minutes. I felt like I was sitting here forever. Okay, track number eight, eight. Yeah, that's a deep ass, uh, it's a deep kick drum. If anything, this might be purgatory, actually. Uh, that that made me feel nothing, honestly. Might be the first song that I don't really like. I don't really see the point. Definitely felt longer than five minutes, and I owe that to the metronome kind of being in the song, kind of reminding me kind of how long we're in this bitch for. But yeah, not many words were coming to mind there. Felt like I was in a coma. But track number nine. Are these bongos? Baseline. I don't know if I like the rhythm of this, or maybe the Doritos are kind of like changing my brain chemistry a little bit. I don't know, this is the baseline kind of made me feel like I was walking into an abandoned arcade and i turned on one of the one of the things and it's i'm just at the like the, like the home screen of like one of the video games and it's frozen it's like a broken machine i can't play it and that's all that it made me feel it didn't make me feel good didn't make me feel bad i, I was just kind of there track number 10 <laughs> yeah this shit is 10 minutes bro This better not be the whole song. thinking about everything right now.
Oh my god. Okay. These videos might be edited. I have to assure you guys though, just to assure you guys that I'm not skipping through anything here. But that song made me feel like I was kind of floating through space. And I think people associate, I think I've heard that term before, of people associating, you know, songs with, oh, I feel like I'm floating through space right now. But in reality, I feel like if you're floating through space, it's terrifying because space is never ending and never ends. You're just kind of going through it for eternity. And it's unlikely that you're going to run into anything for at least a couple trillion years. And then, you know, once I hit the six minute mark, I started questioning space and time and everything like that. I started to dive into some really deep thoughts, not negative thoughts, just deep thoughts. But yeah, definitely outer worldly, I would have to say. Uh, very alien to me. Track number 11 is 11. Imagine being stuck in an elevator listening to this. That'd be that'd be fun. To be honest. Probably one of the more bare bones songs that was featured on here so far. I don't know how that made me feel. It's kind of creepy. It, it is kind of creepy. Okay, track 12 is 12. Very short one, actually. Well, I'm hearing some talking. Why are they so high pitched? I don't like that. Those had to be aliens. Those had to be. Because th these are some alien fucking noises. Incomprehensible spoken word. I feel like th these might be the noises of the aliens that the government is talking about right now. You know what I'm saying? I think Richard has gotten a hold of them. Yeah, very, very mysterious. Probably the most kind of out there song on here yet that's not really related to anything, anything else on here so far. I f also forgot to do this, but I'm actually going to like track 10 right now, to be honest. Okay, track 13. Let's go. got that metronome in the back something like just constantly going off i'm just gonna give it a like right now right away boom It's just so consistent and that little popping sounds like no it's not the popping the little noise that was going through like the whole track i don't know if it was like kind of like a kind of, well i don't know what kind of drum that was but it sounded like the the same thing i heard on the on volume one yeah that track kind of uh put a similar emotion that three did to me i think those are very similar made me feel at ease and at, at this point i'm not really thinking about like the music anymore i'm thinking about like my life like uh, as is, as this is playing okay track 14 let's go kind of static sounding it makes me a little bit afraid wait a minute i kind of like it actually I 
I do like it. Hold on. It's like the sound of like fluorescent lights mixed with like a beautiful synth. It's kind of, it's very weird. I like it a lot. I like that. I kind of like that bass. I don't know why I like this, but I do. are freaking out right now but i like this it's like i don't know it made me feel uncomfortable no that's wrong it made me feel comfortable in an, an uncomfortable setting because the sense i was a i was a fan of and it sounded like that did sound like back rooms like first level type of shit and I, i'm not kidding i'm not trying to bring up the back rooms again but like on the first level there's like the fluorescent lights on the top and that genuinely sounded like it i promise you but yeah i i somehow felt very at ease with that all right let's get into track 15. this is interesting is this ambient is this considered ambient track kind of just flew by to me that didn't really seem like an ambient song man i don't want to be that i don't want to be that guy but yeah really a lot of grit on those drums and i don't really know i i think i've been putting settings to everything so far but i don't really know what the fuck that where that was all right track 60 i feel like i'm in the arctic arctic very windy chilly some kind of like space arpeggio you know i feel like i just landed on a, on a planet and it's all snow this is actually very sounds very interesting okay it's kind of horrifying Is this the fucking predator, bro? At first it was very windy, and then I was just kind of hearing just a collage of different sounds. I know I've used the word alien a lot, but I think, I'm sorry, I'm gonna say it again. I felt like I was on some alien kind of planet. I met the predator at the end. All right, track 17. In terms of song, uh, I did enjoy that one a lot. I think it was actually kind of pretty playful, pretty play playful for uh, for a song on here. Uh, in terms of the steak, I don't really know. I asked for it uh, medium, and I don't know. I mean, I think it's cooked medium, but it's just kind of chewy. I mean, I get that it's steak tips. It's like not supposed to be. That was a good piece, though. Track eighteen. Are these bongos? They are, they are, they are. I, love, I fuck, I fuck with bongos, man. I fuck with bongos. I 
feel like I'm on some kind of beach. I don't, I don't know what kind of beach I'm on. I feel like it's it's very dystopian. It's a chill vibe, actually. I like it. It's a chill vibe. Honestly, ideally, that is the perfect kind of like homework music, like focused, dialed in music. And yeah, the beach thing I mentioned earlier, and that's really, that's all I gotta say about it. <laughs> all right, let's get into track 19. Oh, okay. All right. I love that kick. I love that kick, I really do. Oh my God. Yo, imagine listening to this on a scooter. Or like riding a bike. I thought. I'm liking this more and more as it goes on, actually. Similar to last song, I feel like that's just the kind of vibe that I would use to just chill out and get some homework done. It made me feel very peaceful, but kind of chill at the same time, you know? Not too laid back because it had a rhythm to it. And I think rhythm-wise, I don't know how many songs in here have had even tempo, but uh, I feel like that's my favorite out of them so far. This one should be more popular. Track 20, uh, I'm taking note of its popularity now. Uh, let's go. I see why. It's like looking back on childhood memories, I feel like. Sorry I'm not reacting, I'm just kind of, I don't know, I'm just kind of being. It's almost too positive to the point where it's a little scary. You know, there's like a little, there's like a kind of a feeling of acceptance behind it. To me, that didn't feel like a fixed twin at all, you know? That felt like an ambient track that I would hear from boards of canada it was definitely the brightest track on here so far i love that i thought it was beautiful and I, I loved how it was like four minutes i feel like that's the perfect length you know four might be four might be even kind of big you know four might be uh too much i feel like anything over four is kind of all right track 21. why do you always have to incite fear out of me immediately after a great track Things in this song are like meant to mimic voices and I don't like it. Why, like why am I hearing whispering in the left channel? I don't like that. I don't like that. I don't like that. You know what? I got the perfect thing for this and I'm gonna say it when the song is done. I don't care what y'all say, there is no convincing me. That he used sound, that he used sound effects. Those were vocals. Those were those were people talking. One of my honest thoughts. It felt like that track made me feel like I was placed in a hospital bed, and I'm fading in and out of consciousness. And there's doctors and there's nurses talking around me. That's what that track was. Okay, track 22. No, no. Yeah, 
I am deep inside that alien spaceship. I'm actually at the I'm actually at the front thing. What's that called? The the nest. It's kind of like post-apocalyptic too, in a way, like post-alien invasion. And I feel like it's getting more intense, but the volume isn't increasing. Yeah, terrifying. Um, just an overall scary song. Yeah, I mentioned the aliens earlier. It felt very alien. And uh, yeah, my brain just kind of melted away at that. And that's, uh, that's it. Okay. Uh, I thought we were going to have like a smooth ending here. Uh, but <laughs> 11 minutes song. Let's. Yo, what's it got to take for me to get a chill vibe? Something is growling at me, bro. Something is fucking growling at me. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> what was that? It sounds like a mixture between a laugh and a cry. The laugh is like kind of deeper now. It's like a deeper pitch. Why, why like 11 minutes though? I don't really understand that. Yeah, very long. Very, very long song. Yeah, the laughing and the little vocals, I don't know what those were. And yeah, I've just kind of, my my analysis has just been going down and down. And um, yeah, this is a long ass album. But you know what? It's okay. Uh, that song, uh, the child, the children laughing kind of thing, um, reminded me of Boards of Canada, something I would hear of that. That's the second reference to them. But uh, but the production, not really. Very kind of dark and mysterious production, as always. Um, yeah. My final song is 24, but that's not it for the video because we're going to listen to Stone and Focus after based on recommendations. This feels kind of cinematic. Like, like a movie kind of thing. Oh, I might like it. I might not like it. But it's like, it's cool. It's, it's actually kind of cool. You know what? I think it, I think it fits as an ending, though. I, I think it fits as a... This actually feels a lot longer than five minutes, I don't know why. Oh, a little spontaneous ending there. I think it fits as the closer, to be honest. And I know I'm going to do another song right now, but I think it fits as the closer to this album digitally because, I don't know, it just feels like like end credits scene kind of music you know like the music after like a horror movie or some shit like that or like a like, or like a superhero movie when the villain wins even though there's not many of those i feel like that music goes with that all right we're here uh this is the most popular version of stone and focus on youtube it has a few million views and uh it features i don't know this monkey he's closing his eyes opening them He's 
kind of swag the fuck out. Yo, I should probably focus on the music. You know what? Usually I talk about how this, like, how what setting I would put it in, but I feel like this monkey represents it, or it, uh, that this baboon, I think, represents it perfectly. You know, I think his facial expressions, I think everything is just on point here. I think he represents me. I think he's literally me. That kind of reminds me of, uh, what's that song? 13. It reminds me of 13 a little bit with the metronome in the background. Clearing out a lot of things in the head right now. Christ. Um, probably one of my favorites. It just kind of felt like three, uh, but a little longer. And the little tapping in the back, I think, too. It was it was kind of just like a better version of 13. And I don't know why, but the ape made the song better. I, 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 I know it's crazy, but it just, he did. Speaking about this album in a whole is a very tough thing to do right now. Because although I do kind of rem remember every song off the top of my head, because it is still insanely fresh, um... It's just the ones that stick out to me were the ones I liked. And I think that that's important. And I think it's worth seeing it that way. And I didn't not like any song. I feel like each song played their role. And I think uh, he does a really good job of making me feel a lot of different things. And I don't know the purpose behind this. I don't know the purpose behind this album in total. I don't know the motive behind this guy's music in general. But um, they definitely... They're working on me, <laughs> you know, sure, we can have fun and place it in different settings and everything like that. But I think I'm, I think I gained a lot from listening to this. I see myself going back to three. I, f I see myself going back to 20. Uh, just, uh, I'm forgetting some, but one, seven, stone in focus, of course. Uh, just a lot of things in here that I would love to return to. And I, I, I feel like this is just such a, such a good album. And a, yes, it was long, but I've been around, the, I've been, I've been here before uh how i felt listening to soundtracks for the blind because that's that's that swan's album is a similar length i feel differently about this one uh this this one feels just so different each song kind of in its own world not really relating to each other but the outro 24 did make sense i believe yeah i don't really have much criticisms i mean i think some songs that were really long could have been a little shorter like that 11 minute one you know i didn't see the point in that honestly but um yeah, that's it. That's all I really got to say, man. Thank you for watching. Uh, I'm not sure how much Aphex Twin I have left, but anything else besides Aphex Twin that you want me to get to, be sure to remind me. I'm not ignoring it. I just have sh I, I have a lot of things to do, so it's hard for me to get to albums with single requests, but uh, I won't forget about it. So yeah, thank you for watching. Subscribe. I'll see ya.